Hi, this is John from Sharp Mountain Games, and today we're going to talk about five things from 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons that you can bring to your old school Dungeons & Dragons or fantasy campaign. Now, I tend to run OSR games, old school games. So these are games that are based on older editions of Dungeons & Dragons, say up until about 2nd edition or up until about the year 2000. They're simpler rules. They're more familiar for me. That's just my game style that I prefer. 5e is a little bit more complicated compared to the older editions. So, just so you know, I've run OSR, but I have played in a number of 5e games that friends and other players of mine have, have run um, and had a great time in them. Um, I've DM'd, I think, one or two sessions of 5e based on the play tests earlier on, so that was maybe about five years ago. So, this video is not about which edition is better. I'm not even wading into that swamp. I've had a great time running and playing old school games, and I've had great times playing 5th edition. I really think that which rule set you prefer, it's a matter of taste. No edition wars here. We're not even going there. But there are some things in 5th edition that I want to point out that I think are worth maybe at least considering, you know, food for thought, that you might want to bring some of these things into your old school game. I try to think about things that are not overly complex, that are not adding a lot of complexity, and also things that, um, you know, hopefully would make the game more fun, not just to bring things in to bring things in. So number one, and I think this is the obvious one that most people would, would guess, is advantage and disadvantage. So an advantage and disadvantage, if you're not familiar, you roll two dice and you keep the one that's better. So if you have advantage in a situation, um, you know, you'll take the higher dice. If you have disadvantage, you'd have to take the lower one. You'd have to keep the one that's worse. I think this is worth considering for old school games. It's a very quick mechanic. So if a player has a really, really great idea or a really, really clever idea, but you still want them to make a roll, you might say, that's great. Make it with advantage. You know, you're trying to convince the town guard of something and you have a really great idea. I'm going to let you roll two dice and keep the better. Or when they have a crazy idea, I'm going to leap on a table, kick the pitcher of ale into the person's face, all while singing a taunting song. Eh, that's kind of tricky. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Sure, you can try it. Roll two dice and keep the worst. Now, I would say if you're going to bring advantage in, I don't say I'd use it rarely, but I would not use it as a core mechanic. I wouldn't have it all the time. Keep it for those cases when the player is doing something really great and you think it's a really great idea, or they're trying something really you think is kind of crazy, but you still want to give them a chance. So that's number one. Number two is the backgrounds in 5th edition. Now, 5e has a very, very detailed, I think they have four different points for the backgrounds and bonds and things like that. And I do not recommend bringing that whole full system over. At least I wouldn't. It would be too complicated for me. However, the idea of letting them have a background has really been around a long, long time. And it may not be in your particular OSR rule set, but you might want to consider, you know, say, uh, letting a character say, I used to be an athlete or I used to be a farmer, or I grew up as a nobleman or a noblewoman. And then you can use that when they're role-playing. You might give them advantage on a role. Um, I would restrict it to non-combat. I don't know that I would go too much bringing it into combat. But let's say a person, they grew up as a farmer. and say, well, how's that going to help? How's that going to help you when you're dungeon delving? Well, what if you're in a rural part of the kingdom and you need some information? A farmer is probably going to be able to easily talk with another farmer in the area, and maybe even get a little more information out of them. You know, it's like that in, in our world, too. If you share a profession with somebody, if two doctors meet each other and talk, they really they have a, a lot of commonality and things they can talk about. So number two is something about backgrounds, maybe just one or two words just to consider. Now, number three is skills. 5e has a lot of skills. Um, I think it's somewhat long. Other people might not think it's all that long. I think it's a little shorter than third edition. And I don't advocate porting them all in or requiring a skill roll for everything. In the old school, the attributes really act as broad skill categories. However, skills have been around a long time. Skills have been around even since first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. 
They were in the Rule Cyclopedia, which I believe was 1989. So if a player really wants to have a couple of non-combat skills, you might give them an extra plus two bonus. I don't know if I'd go as far as advantage. That's up to you. But for example, if their intelligence is 15, um, but there's some area that they've, they want to say, well, I really studied this particular type of history, and then they roll under a 17 when they do that. You know, maybe a plus two bonus. Um, the only thing I would be careful if you're going to bring skills into the old school, the old school is very class oriented. So you want to make sure if you're bringing skills in, you don't step on other classes toes. So a wizard really shouldn't be better at sneaking than say a thief or um, a cleric. Maybe they have some woodsy kind of background, but they shouldn't be better than a ranger on certain things. So I would still try to maintain the um, class distinctions. Now, number four is inspiration. What inspiration lets you do is do a re-roll or an advantage roll um, in certain situations. It's really a benefit dice. Um, I believe Fate also has a version of that with their Fate points. It's worth considering at least bringing into the old school, and I've used it. So you earn your inspiration points, especially by acting in character. And what I've done at face-to-face -face games is I have those little glass stones, little decorative glass stones. I think you can even get them at the dollar store. They're, they're fairly cheap. Um, and they can use those as benefit points. And I also would give it to them if they came up with something very clever. I mean, if they re really entertain me, um, I would consider giving them um, an, it's a kind of an inspiration point or a benefit. It's one of those things that you bring in. They're only going to use it once or twice a session. It's not going to break anything. Now, number five, and this one some people may or may not like, and that's all right, is Ascending Armor class. Descending Armor class, where nine is, you know, kind of you don't wear any armor, and one is very, very heavily armored and shield, that was the old school system. And some people really like to stick to that. They're familiar with it. I ran it for a few years that way. And in fact, Ascending Armor class isn't necessarily any better. The math is exactly the same. If you're doing it right, the numbers are exactly the same. The percentages, same. Ascending armor class is not more accurate or precise in any way. However, it came in with third edition Dungeons and Dragons. It's been around for about 20 years now. That's a whole generation. By considering the switch to ascending armor class, you're really widening your base. You're broadening the base, as they say, so that you can get more and more players and younger players uh, maybe who will be more comfortable with the system. So I think it's at least worth considering. Now let's end the video and just to tell you, nothing I've said here is gospel. You don't have to adopt all these five things. I don't expect you to. Um, I don't know that I would use all five things in any one particular game. However, I think there are some good ideas here, some good ideas in 5th edition that are worth at least thinking about, at least food for thought. Um, you know, and you have to know your game group, which of these they might enjoy or they might not enjoy. Like, I'm sure most players are going to enjoy rolling two dice and having that advantage. They might not like the disadvantage, but I think a lot of them would take that for the chance to get advantage um, in certain situations. So, again, hopefully you got some thoughts out of this, just things to think about. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. If you want to support the channel, I'm not asking for Patreon or anything. Rather, we have some products, and you can take a look at our products. Uh, the links are below to Amazon, Roll20, Drive-Thru RPG, and Lulu. So thanks very much, and see you in the next video.